Hello guys, welcome to a different uh, episode here. Um, due to popular request, I'm going to do a kind of how it, how to on how I made my race for the wool. Um, step one is planning, um, and for that I use uh, I use. I mean, you can use anything you want. You can use paint, or you can just draw it out. I use this little program. It's called Dia or Dia, however you would wish to say it. Um, they have all different kinds of uh, presets that you can pick from. Uh, I found out about this program when I was in college, uh, but it doesn't really matter which one you use, honestly. Uh, but it allows you to drag out, you know, different objects and stuff very quickly, and uh, make modifications to them. So what you do, what I did is I started out in the planning phase, and you have, you know each different parts of your map and then what comes off of you know each next one that comes out you know victory monument and stuff like that okay these are the basic areas of a race for the wool map you have your your starting area, your victory monument, the transition between that monument and wool one, then uh, wool one of course, the transition between that area and wool two, wool two, and then the transition between that and wool three. And you know you have arrows in here too that you can designate. Hey, this goes to that, and you know, this goes to that if it'll do it for me. Okay, and once you have your, your basic, you know, this is what the main areas are going to be, you can go ahead and start filling in details on the area, which is what I did. And see, another reason I like this program is you can drag these around, and as long as you've got the objects, you know, tethered together, they'll stay stay related. So, your your starting area, pretty basic. You know, just that front front area that has the, the switches and the, and the stuff like that. And the victory monument is also pretty basic. Um, area one transition, you know, you could put a few notes in here. Like for mine, it was a mostly water area. And then I also put a hidden pickaxe in that area as well. Um, a lot of people did not find it. I will show you where that is uh, since nobody seems to have found it. Um, and then, uh, you know, wool one, I had, you know, supplies trap box and then creeper maze area 2 transition was a giant chasm with lava uh, wool 2 my castle and the catacombs uh, chutes and ladders and silver fish with walls at the end. And my area 3 transition was you know, broken ridges and I, I made it, I titled it a uh, diamond uh, creation area. And then wool 3 I wanted to make a, you know, has a random randomized trap and a teamwork test for the final. So once you've got your basic areas, you can put details on it. Uh, you can get as detailed with these as you want. Um, it's always just easier. I th find it easier. You can do this and come up with ideas and, and, and lay them out in a, a format that is easy to see at a glance. Um, and you can also export in this program as different things. Um, these blue lines are your page breaks. You can, you can change all that in there as well. Um, but once you got all that done, I don't need this anymore. Uh, on that program, uh, if you didn't realize how that toolbar was separate, that was actually an import from a Linux program. So once you get that done, you go into your MC Edit. Okay, once you're in MC Edit here, you have all different kinds of things you can do. 
um, your basic tools, select brush and stuff like that. For more details on that, I'm going to go ahead and link in the description. You can go look at uh, Bash's uh, MC Edit tutorials on specific how to makes. But this basic area, the starting area from here all the way over to there, and of course all the way to the other lane, that was all pre made. That was a uh, Vex, Vex thing. The only thing I added was this area here, which is the, the shooting area. And then you make a tran you know, your transition area. And for those of you that wanted to know where the pickaxe is, it's down here. This first chest is a stick, has a joke. You break back a couple of blocks and there's another chest that has a diamond pickaxe hidden inside. Area 1 for the wool. You have the trap the box here, um, create the brush, all the resources, and the creeper maze. Now another thing that I noticed is a lot of the Let's Plays had said something about there being a lot of spawners in this area. Yeah, see these yellow dots? Those are the spawners. Two. That's it. I didn't take any out. There's always been two of them. Um, one thing I did do though is I moved them to the surface. Uh, but we'll get to that in the, the last part of this here. Here is our transition area between um, areas one and two. This is another thing over here that I added. I will get back get to that at the, the end here. And here's my castle. Now I made this castle actually in a single player setting a long time ago when I first started Minecraft. What I did is I loaded the world, cut it out, and exported it as a schematic, then I imported it in here, um, selected the whole area, changed all of the cobblestone, because that's what I had built it out of, because back in the day before we had stone brick, I hated cobblestone, but I liked brick, the brick idea. I actually had all of my cobblestone uh, texture packed as brick, so I replaced, replaced the cobblestone with, um, with stone bricks. Uh, then we have the transition area between two and three, which is, and yes, I called it a diamond factory. There is actually diamond in here. Uh, these are layers of obsidian here, and in between each layer of obsidian is actually a layer of diamond. Uh, the very top is coal, but as you get further down, it's diamond. See there, you can see in here. Here's the, there's the coal, there's the diamond. Uh, these pillars, I created just a giant pillar and then broke out pieces and stuff by hand. Uh, wool 3. Yeah, this this head was actually kind of incidental. Uh, I had I was looking at schematics and my son saw it. He said it looked cool, and so I said, hey, you know what? I'm gonna put it in the map. And this is the randomized trap. Bunch of wiring back here. You can kind of see through the wall. And this is the teammate test. The idea is each side. This is one lane up here and then this is another lane down here and a player goes on each lane these are buttons these purple blocks here are buttons when the top player pushes his button it deactivates the bottom players pistons and when the bottom player hits the button it deactivates the top players pistons this lava here by the piston is the trap that can or cannot be activated depending on what random uh, value you got from the generator there um, and it went down, weaved in and out. You got some some cave spider spawners in here. Um, I didn't want to make those breakable because they're easy to just stick a block in the hole. Um, you stick a block in the hole, you know, make sure you have a couple torches and those are solved. But this area actually has the most spawners. And it's just the cave spiders. So it shouldn't be it's actually not that hard of an area to deal with uh, from what I've heard. It's actually the easiest on here. Um, but yeah, that's how you, that's, that's how what I did to make the general areas. Um, now if you want to know about any of the redstone, go ahead and if I get enough requests in the comments of this video, I might do another video exclusively on the redstone circuitry in here because that could take up a whole episode. Now we go on to lessons learned and what I had to do for bug fixes. Okay, initial release. 
Um, stuff like this building wasn't here. This building's actually a recent addition. Uh, there was no torches in a lot of places. Um, it was all dark. And so when they first played it, they had a really big issue with mob spawning. So what I did is I went through and, you know, lit up the area a little bit. Got some torches on the ground in here. If I can find one. Seems I can't find one. Whatever. Yeah, I could. There's one. Um, we got some torches on the ground here. I added torches to the cannons. I added torches to the castle. Went crazy with all the torches. Uh, second issue they came across was this chutes and ladders area <laughs> lacked ladders. Oops. It was an oversight. Um, I had actually, uh, I, I, I didn't put them in the first time because I actually, people say, you know, this reminds me of, you know, hey, it's Vex Shoots and Ladders. I had actually started making this map before Vex came out with his second Race of the, for the Wool. When he came out with his second one, I was actually working on that final area there. So it was kind of already in there and I didn't bother to change it. So that's the history on that. So one of the changes I made is I added ladders to make this easier to traverse. After that, uh, they, when they played it, played it again, and he came back with some, some more issues. Um, one of them was that uh, they still had a hard time at this wool here. And when I had originally designed it, my intention was, you know, put some lava down if you needed to, uh, let it go over the edge, and then turn the lava into cobblestone. But that wasn't painfully obvious, so I added two ch uh, ch double chest here. As you, as you can see, it says mostly water bucket and mostly lava bucket, so I gave them the supplies to do that. Then after I saw the videos, I noticed a few more issues that I had wanted to address. And uh, since this is my first map, I really didn't think about it beforehand, but this is another thing that you should think about in your planning stages. Um, do you want to starve your players of resources? And this being a PvP map, I don't didn't really want to starve my players, so I added a supply room over here. It's got a whole bunch of different stuff they can get, um, so that way they don't have to sit there and farm forever down here. Uh, that way they don't you know they don't spend two hours just gathering materials. Um, let's see. Oh, another thing that I noticed, and I'm sure you all noticed, is the mobs were crazy. So this one actually required a little bit more more thought into the process. Um, why are there so many mobs spawning? Oh, and this glowstone was added in the last release because there was mobs spawning up here and jumping off and attacking the players. I didn't want that, so I just put a layer of glowstone on top. Problem solved. Um, but anyway, back to the other issue. There was mobs spawning everywhere, you know, like crazy. And I did a little research, and if you noticed, you see the little checkerboard pattern. That's all void. Completely around this is void. Nothing, nothing but open, open void. So, since it's void, mobs won't spawn there. So I figured out that what the game was doing is, since there's nowhere else to spawn, everything when it spawned was spawning in any spawnable area, which is right here where all the players are. And so that way, it, it would reach mob cap, and all the mobs would be where the players interacted with them. Even if, even if I had lit it up, they would have to make sure all the light levels were high enough to prevent mod cap, and that would pretty much just ruin the whole game. You would spend the whole time just lighting everything up. So the solution that I came up, actually it was inspired by Vex. I opened up his map to look and see what happened. So I put a nice little area in here. Yes, the poly die because it's filled with lava, but it's also filled with lava so players can't get to it. They can only dig so far in the wall. I didn't want them to go nuts with the digging in the wall. Uh, these are all pig spawners. Um, so that way the pigs will spawn in here and even without the spawners animals will spawn in there because it's grass is lit up you know fun stuff and they will take up some of the mob cap and hopefully there's enough of them that it won't go nuts with spawns again. Um, and I did that in several areas. I put a huge area down here that has a bunch of spawnable areas for mobs. So now that you guys have seen it, you guys probably dig down, but hey, if you want to do that just for animals, best of luck to you. Um, and then I put 
Now over here had kind of their own built-in one. Um, this castle is mainly for decoration. <laughs> As a uh, badge found out, he got really pissed off. He got tired of uh, you know, breaking into an area and and uh, there being nothing in there. So I put some spawners in here, so stuff would spawn up here. Uh, most of the time they won't bother the player. Uh, the only time they will is if they're in one of these close towers. So I went ahead and actually took out the spawners that I had in these closer towers. The whole point of this area was, hey look, there's diamond and iron, and here's the entrance to your area. Uh, so this had its own built-in spawn capper. Now this last area, I didn't want any spawns at all. Uh, so I kind of had that taken care of on top. A lot of mobs would spawn up here. And I had this lit up down here. Oh, and on the side note, you originally had creeper uh, gas spawners down here. I decided I don't want that, so I took them out. And then I, I lit up some of this, so mobs shouldn't be spawning too much. And then I also put another spawn pad for some mobs down in the bottom. So hopefully that should prevent any, any and all hostile mobs from spawning over there. Um, yeah, but those are the kind of things that you kind of got to watch for. Uh, I learned, this was my first map, you, you learn things as you go along, but hopefully this will come in handy to anyone hoping to create a map. And you can take these uh, these processes and pretty much apply them to any map type, I would believe, uh, especially the early planning stages. Uh, that diagram, you you know, if, if you had like an intersection type map, each one might lead to you know, several nodes. So it's it's really nice to be able to see and visualize it without you know, hey, where was I working and and stuff like that. But again, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, please feel free to rate, comment, and subscribe. This is not my usual type of video. So if I was too boring or you just don't really care, then yeah, you know, let me know. And if you don't care, then okay, I don't care either. <laughs> Alright, see you guys next time.